So there was a time when I was about to give up and it was actually right before I met you guys. So I'm gonna get emotional. Oh my gosh. Um, I had gone through something really rough and family stuff. And sometimes that can get really hard. And I was forced to move away somewhere I had never been for my own good. And I knew no one. But I also blended in there, so no one really knew me at the beginning. But I met you guys. And <laughs> you're so warm. And such bright lights. And I'm so happy to know you. And I'm so glad you guys are here <laughs> to spend this time with me. Because it reminds me of that time and how far I've gotten and how far away I am from there now. Because I found my lights and you guys helped me stick through it and turn my life around. So I'm just really thankful for that time. Um, eighth grade, I lost a really close friend of mine. Um, it was an accidental suicide. At that point, I really didn't know like how to control my emotions. I let all of my emotions get the best of me and whatnot, and I thought I really couldn't handle it, and I didn't really talk to people after the passing. And then, four days after my 14th birthday, I, uh, tried to overdose um obviously didn't succeed thank god um but yeah i guess just talk not talking to people about it and just keeping it all in and just pre having to like pretend um that i was strong and i had to be strong for others put a lot on me after that i just learned how to cope with things and i started talking to people and yeah, now I'm really, really happy with myself. Yeah. Oh gosh. Um, this one's really personal, but um, I was in college and my ex-boyfriend got me pregnant and I miscarried. Um, I wanted to give up on school, um, but something kind of just told me to continue and then the whole ex-boyfriend thing didn't work out anyways. But. Um, yeah, that was definitely a time I just wanted to give up and honestly just kind of end my life. Um, but I didn't. Um, I attempted, but I moved past it all, got help from my family and friends, kind of opened up to them about it, and yeah, moved up. I definitely was very, uh, how do I say this? I didn't want to open up about it because I was still young and I didn't want anyone to know, but when I finally opened up to like my close friends, they were understanding about it and then to my older sister who had no idea about it and she was very supportive. And then I actually um, started seeking therapy. My family didn't know, I kind of went behind their back. And, um, cause my dad didn't really believe in therapy. He's like, whatever, like don't need it kind of thing. But he didn't know what happened to me until I told him kind of. Kind of doesn't know till his day. I think he, kind of, he senses it, but just opening up to friends, family, and then talking to my counselor at school who, whom I told like I wanted to give up on school, but I didn't. And they just all pushed me, so, yeah. Um, yes, actually, last year in February, I attempted suicide, because growing up, I always struggled with, like, myself, and then I was brought down by my, by my mom, and then I was sexually assaulted my junior year, which triggered a lot of things, which led to self-harm, and then attempted suicide. That was, like, my darkest days. Well, I'm glad you're still here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what helped you get through it? Um, definitely my family. And I did seek help. I went to therapy for a while, was on medication, which I did not like, but I'm actually clean. I'm a year clean of self-harm due to like my sister. She helped me a lot. Are you guys your sister? Yeah, <laughs> oh. she helped me a lot. And my little brother, he was born like a year ago and he's helped me a lot too. Just all the positivity and I also go to church, so yeah. <laughs> Ooh, completely giving up. 
Probably, yeah. Uh, not too long ago, actually. It was about a few months ago, earlier this year. Um, I was kind of like a little lost, I guess. Um, I didn't know what my purpose in life was. I didn't know what I wanted to do. So it's just like, it's like waking up every day. And it's like, I don't know, it was hard to get up for no reason. Like I had stuff to do, but it was really hard to get up. And it's like, I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain, really. Um, but yeah, I'm doing much better now, though. I was getting sick of it. Like I just wanted, I just didn't want to get stuck in that like phase of my life. So I just decided to get up, like just make your bed, simple things like that. A little bit ago, my my dog died, and I understood it was just a really small thing to a lot of people. It happens over and over again in people's lives. Things die, but I guess. It was something that kept me tethered and made me realize that it's the people around me that make me happy and it's such a small group and um, one of them was gone and I, I realized that the more people I met, the more people would disappear and meeting people is part of growing up and for a second there I didn't know that I could do it. I didn't think I could meet more people or could grow up. But uh, I got another dog and I met more people and somebody told me that looking back on memories, it's like looking through a window and you still appreciate the things and the people that were there, but you're not on the other side of that window anymore. And I guess that's how I learned not to give up after not wanting to grow up. <laughs> Uh, really, it's been within the last year, um, with school, just the, um, I don't know exactly what I want to do, and it, that as well as I recently came out to my parents, and work, it's all, it's like a multifaceted attack on me, it's not directed by any one person, but all that coming at me at once, it's made me just want to give up and I have to fight like every day to just like keep going. I was in, I was in high school. Um, I had a really, really rough, probably few months with my parents and I didn't have many close friends. I had friends, but I didn't feel anything past like I guess like companionship um, and then I guess I just kind of lost hope in any type of future yeah so it was mostly just because I I couldn't connect with anyone for a while I, I don't have anything like complex to say about this <laughs> like I was not in control of what was happening around me even when I was acting or speaking I was sort of almost like autopilot constantly and then during really low points I was just convinced that there was n absolutely no reason I needed to be here anymore. I started thinking about my future a little bit and I started thinking about my family. I guess I knew that people cared about me <laughs> enough <laughs> and even though I didn't feel it I I understood it logically and that was enough to pull me out of it, I guess. So I used to battle with anorexia uh, about uh, two years ago. Felt like giving up. I woke up one day and I just said, this is enough. I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, I was like, I don't want to give up. And I just said, you know what, I'm going to keep continuing. So what made you change your mind and just keep going? Uh, I thought about my family, friends, my dreams that I would never uh, succeed in if I didn't, if I gave up, so. What are your dreams? Uh, to move to America. Okay, so did that come true? Yes, <laughs> it did. It's hard to pick one. <laughs> I think there have been a lot of times throughout my life 
Um, so I don't really have like one heartfelt, interesting anecdote about it. Um, something more that I've been realizing is like a chronic issue um, that has been throughout my life. Like going back and reading my journals, there have been a lot of moments where I have thought about giving up, um, but I'm glad I haven't. Yeah. I'm glad you haven't too. Thank you. It's a lot of uh, feeling hopeless and in despair and so dark and that there's no way to get out and that I'll never get out of feeling that way. But I always do. What helps? Um, Antidepressants. <laughs> Uh, music, watching YouTube videos until it passes, <laughs> that's what I usually do. Um, I've never really felt maybe like completely giving up, but there's been times when I just have no direction and I don't know what to do. Um, and especially in college, my first year in college was really rough and my family was overseas. Uh, I was kind of alone in America. And um, there were just times when I, I had no idea what I was doing. And I just kind of ended up literally wandering around on the street. <laughs> and I had, uh, there was more than one time when homeless guys would come up and be like, are you okay? <laughs> and I ended up like talking and having good conversations with homeless guys who were just trying to make sure that I was going to be okay. <laughs> And, um, and it, was, it was really neat that, you know, other people reached out when I was clearly not in a good place. Uh, and that's what helped me get through. <laughs> so, like, you literally think that those people asking you how you're doing is how you got through it? I really do. I mean, I, I honestly, and this, I know this is, like, crazy for so many people, but I literally believe that they were angels. <laughs> Especially one particular night, I was uh, wandering around and I was... There was a river running through uh, Wilmington and I was sitting right next to the river and I guess I looked like I was about to jump um, and and one guy came up to me and I had seen him you know he's a homeless man that was around often and he came up to me and he was like oh goodness are you are you okay do you need to talk <laughs> and I just ended up talking to him and his name was Jason and uh, we had an interesting conversation about how he became homeless and you know the struggles that we both kind of were going through and it was really neat but yeah that really that really helped me <laughs> I feel like I wasn't alone if you could if you could say something to Jason right now what would you tell him oh my goodness I just want to hug him again um, because he I don't think he knows how much he impacted me and I don't know where he is or what he's doing or if he's okay but he clearly had nothing and when I hugged him he was so bony um, but he he reached out in, in my time of need um, and I just have to thank him for that so I'm trying to start a club at my high school and the administration told me that I'm not allowed to do it because it's mental health related and that would be a liability and instead of giving up I just talked to one of my teachers who I know um, agrees with me about the issue and wants to help me solve it and we took it to the curriculum director and are working on changing the minds of the administration. It's called the Resilience Project and it's designed to help people empower themselves to ask for help when they're struggling. So what made you want to start a club like that? Uh, my community has a mentality, um, we're butte tough and we kind of just believe that we can get through anything by ourselves and because of that we have a really big suicide problem and I think if we kind of change the conversation about mental health and work towards um, being strong enough to ask for help instead of being strong enough to face it alone then we'll be able to fix the problem or help solve it. Hi everyone, thanks for watching another episode. Basically, I just want to say welcome to the new subscribers and to the subscribers who have been with me for a while. I want to thank you for constantly supporting my channel. That's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys again for everything and I'll see you next week. <laughs>